Right, welcome back to another video in our Basics of the WAM Stack series. Now, in the previous videos, we've looked at every component of the WAM Stack apart from the M. We've looked at the W for Webflow, we've looked at the A for Airtable, and the Z for Zapier. And doing that, we've created this Rate My Doggy website where you can list various different dogs and indeed give them a rating. And as we know, we use our Zapier to push that through to Airtable and that in turn pushes it through to the Webflow CMS, which makes it show up here. Now that's all well and good, and to be honest, that takes care of most of the front end, most of the back end, most of the workflows, and indeed any APIs and integrations we might have to worry about. But one crucial part that's missing from the WAM stack, which is usually taken care of by default in many other no-code tools like Adalo, Bubble, Glide, and Backendless, is the ability to log in and have member accounts. Now for this, we're gonna use this tool called MemberStack. I'm a massive fan of MemberStack myself. I've been using it on the nocode.tech website for a long time. Um, and uh, it's really, really powerful. It lets you not only have your member accounts on more or less any website, uh, but you can also take payments, um, charge monthly subscriptions, whatever it is you need to do to make it work. So. Clearly, I've already got an account here that I use for nocode.tech and some other websites, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new website. And you can see some of the options, by the way, that MemberStack integrates with. And if you hit show more, uh, there's a ton, but we're going to go with Webflow because that is part of our WAMS stack. So we're going to call this Rate My Doggy. You can start from a template if you like. Uh, you've got various different options. I'm not going to bother personally. Um, do I need to accept payments? Well, in this case, I'm going to say no, and that's just going to keep things simple. But you can, of course, say yes, I do. You can select different types of currency, um, etc., etc. But we're going to say no, and that's going to immediately bring us into the member stack dashboard. And one of the things I really like about member stack is just how helpful it is. You know, the first thing I've got here is this checklist that I can follow at the top. Um, I've also got tutorial videos. Uh, it will tell me how to get to my advanced features. I've got a community help center roadmap, etc., etc. Um, but we are going to immediately jump into creating a membership. So within MemberStack, uh, every user account you want to add falls under a particular membership. They can be free or they can be paid and you can have multiple. I'm going to hit new membership and it's going to ask me for a plan name. This is indeed a membership name. We're going to call this a basic member. We're going to say it's free. And by the way, again, if you hit require payment, you can say how much does it cost? Is that monthly, yearly, once off, etc.? We're going to hit free, of course. Um, you can also restrict it to certain domains, uh, which we're not going to do. But again, if you want to do like a .edu or you only let people from an at Google email sign up, you could do that if you really wanted to. You can create members only content. And this is really, really interesting because this is where we can start to hide pages that we don't want other people uh, who are not members to be able to see. Um, I'm going to discard that for now and we'll come back to that later. You can do various things like have a page after sign up. So if you want your users to sign in and come to a welcome page, you can do that too. And of course, after log out, for example, you can send them back to the home page. So we're going to create that membership and we'll set it up. Uh, page after sign up required. Uh, so we'll just send people to, um, so I made this new page. We'll send people to called add dog. Um, I just threw it up. I didn't think it was worth taking you through creating it. And all it is is a basic page with a form that lets people add a dog to the database. I'm going to create that. It works just the same as the previous one we did. But see, now that we've created a, a membership, if we go back to our dashboard, we can now go to the next part in the process, which is installing what we call the header code. Let's talk a little bit about what this is before I go ahead and use it. So quite often on Webflow or in any no-code tool, if you're trying to add a little add-on, for example, let's say you're adding live chat to your website and you want to use a tool like Crisp. Well, typically you'll get what we call a header code and they'll just ask you to copy and paste a little snippet of code into either the header, the body, the footer. You know, they'll use different words like these. And essentially this is just a little bit of code. You don't have to understand what it does, but when you put it on your website, Whatever tool you're allowing access to will be able to add things to your website, manipulate it, do whatever they want. Um, clearly, if you're going to add this to your website, you need to make sure it's from a source that you trust and that you're happy with um, You know what that code's actually going to do to your website. Clearly, I trust MemberStack. It's a very reputable company. I use it all the time, and therefore, I've got no problem using it. So what I did there is, from designer, I went to project settings. Let me just show you that again, actually, because I was... You were probably listening to me talking instead. Um, so you can either get here through a dashboard, but from the designer, I'm just going to pop up to project settings. 
Um, and then along here, I mean, you've got all sorts of different settings around changing your name, changing the icon, etc. But if I go to custom code, I go to that header, I've pasted that in there, I've saved that change. Um, and essentially, what is going to happen there is the code is now going to be live and available. Now, the one thing I need to do just before my changes are going to be uh, showing is I need to publish the website up here. I can republish that to my ratemydoggy.webflow.io domain. And uh, now what we can do is in member stack, if I hit test installation, oh, I need to add a test in the domain, that is just going to quickly check that my website works. So it's asking me to add a test domain. Clearly my test domain, as we know, is ratemydoggy.webflow.io. If I go back here, uh, HTTPS, ratemydoggy.webflow.io. It's going to check. It now knows that exists. It's happy with that. I can hit save. Now what I can do is hit test installation and member stack will actually check to see if that code is showing up there. Because we've done it right, it's now showing up and it immediately tells me, okay, the next step is to create a member. So you can have a couple of things here. You can manually add somebody. Um, you can import existing members or, uh, you know, as you might expect, you can go and just add a login form. So this is where you get all these different features that you can do. If I go back to my dashboard, I can add a login form, customize branding, I can enable member profiles, invite people, hide content, etc. We're going to do a few of these things just to show you how it works. So first of all, let's go and create a login form. Now, member uh, member stack will make this really, really easy for you. You can either create a custom uh, login form that looks exactly the way you want it to look, and it will essentially give you all the different information you need to put in to make that custom login form work. It's also got videos on how to do it, etc. But you can also just add a button and have member stack pop up its own basic, simple login form. So let's talk a little bit about what's actually on this screen and how it works. So first of all, when you create your membership, you can add various different fields. The obvious ones are going to be email and password. And that means when a user logs in, I want their email, I want their password. I could also ask things like what country are they in? Um, you know, how do they identify themselves? Uh, what's their, their gender orientation? What's their phone number? You know, whatever I want. Um, and then what will essentially happen is all those fields will pop up here. Some of them will be customizable, some of them won't. And then if I look at the setup instructions, essentially what member stack is saying is if I take this link here and if I put that into my... Um, a Webflow link, then it will automatically pop up a login module. I can also add the ability for them to sign up. Let me show you how that looks. So if we go back into our designer, and what I've done there, by the way, uh, on that little um, field, if I hit that button, copy, that will put that text into my clipboard. So if we come here, there's a few things that we can do. We can just throw a button in. I'm just going to throw them in somewhere really ugly. I know this isn't where you would ordinarily put them, but I just want them front and centre so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to put a button here. That button is going to say Login. And what I do, if I click that and go to the configuration on the side, I've got a URL here, I can pop that in. And I think it will work actually without me putting in uh, my website address. But if I pop that there, I've got Login. And I can also do another one for Sign Up. Let me make a couple of changes uh, to the div block just to kind of um, center these two elements. And then what we'll do is for this button, we will just force it 40 pixels apart from the sign up button. And tell you what, just for a little bit of interest, let me just grab that little hex code there. Uh, I'll take the sign up and I will chase that, change that, sorry, to red. So now if I go ahead and publish that, then it should work for a login. Another thing I forgot to do, so that will show me how to set up my login. But if I pop into sign up, again, I can add custom fields if I want uh, that we can save. But um, essentially, there's a little bit more information here. So if you want to comply with GDPR, you can add an email uh, opt-in box. If you want to add terms and services, uh, terms of services, privacy policy from your website, you can do that here. Um, but all I'm going to do is grab the membership uh, sign up link and I can do that just by hitting Memberships page. That will take me to a new tab. And then when I click in here, I get the sign up link. And this is the link here. So I can copy that and go to my sign up. And just like I did for the last one, this should work. We'll pop that in there. We'll hit publish, publish that again. 
And by the way, one of the things that you can do is you can go in, you can completely customize that. Instead of putting a simple link in, it will give you attributes like you can specify in the same way that we take a form and specify, okay, this is an email um, or this is a password or this is, you know, uh, like if we look down here, you know, this is a rating. In the same way, I can essentially construct a login form just like this, except where it says things like name and ID uh, or custom input attributes, I can simply add things that say, okay, this is a login field that corresponds to name. You know, maybe this is the one that corresponds to how they identify themselves. Maybe this one corresponds to age, whatever I want it to be. So you can play around with that, but I'll leave that to the viewer. So let me go to my website. I've got my login button. I've got my sign up button. If I hit sign up, this pops up. Let's me put in whatever I like. I can say, uh, let's log up now at nocode.tech. Let's put a password. Bear me that a bit more complex in case I leave this up. Leave that as a uh, window. I can sign that up. And immediately it's going to take me to my uh, my little page that I made, the add a dog page. So I've got name, breed, email, whatever. I can hit rate my doggy, take me back. And you'll see the login form's gone because it already knows that I'm logged in. Um, now you'll notice a really key problem here. We don't have a log out button. So what I can do is if I come back here, uh, there's all sorts of different stuff you can access, you know, that you can access a profile, check out, etc. Um, but what happens is uh, when you look, I think it's under links, is it? Yes, when you look under links, it's going to give you all these different things you can do. So you can launch the sign up model, uh, model, sorry, the login, you can do a password reset, member profile, all this stuff you'd expect. But I can also grab a logout link and uh, I can now make a new button. Let me show you. So I can take this button, let me copy and paste that, and then I better grab the, uh, oops, I better grab the uh, login link, logout link again, sorry, just because I used my um, copy and paste. So I grab that again. This time we've got logout. I'm going to change that to indeed logout. I'm going to hit publish, and let's see what happens. Again, let's reload the website. Back up, I can hit log out, that's going to log me out, I can hit log in, I'll be able to log in with my same username and password and I'm logged back in. And so there you go, easy as that, um, I've created a really simple login and log out system. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you, which is hiding a button or hiding content from a non-logged in user. Um, so what we can do, again, you've got all these kind of various different... Um, a kind of logins, etc. But if I go back to my dashboard, let's just close that tab, and uh, this time I'm going to look at hidden content. So if I go in here, and uh, essentially what I can do is click in there, I can look down for members only content. So we're going to say let's hide some content. Uh, we're going to go for our uh, add a dog page. So that's root a uh, mydoggy.com slash add dog. You get various kind of access to the ID page and that kind of thing. You can also hide buttons and links. Now it said we can hide buttons and links, so let me just show you that in a bit more detail, right? So if I pop in here, and if I make if I take one of these links, now again I'm just gonna copy and paste uh, as I do a lot. In fact, no I'm not, I'm gonna change this. We're going to say add, whoops, add dog, and I'm going to change that to link to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to change that to link to the add dog page, as you might expect, and that's that. So that should, in theory, when I click that, link to the add dog page, exactly as you would expect it to do. And if I just refresh that page, now that I've pushed those changes live, if I hit add dog, um, then nothing happens, and we'll show you just why that is in a wee second. We hit log out. So we go here, and uh, we've got that content set. So you can, you know, set that where you want it to be available, unavailable. You can also grab these uh, uh, these attributes, and essentially what that will let you do is you can add that to any content you like on your website. I mean, you could literally add that to any element and it will only show to somebody who is logged in to this membership. It's really, really cool, really, really powerful what it does as well. Um, and then again, if you want to get back into all the various options, you've got them there so you can change it, you can play around with it. But let's pop back. Uh, oops, get that little bar out of the way. Let's hit save and close. 
Um, now, one thing to really point out here, just because a member stacks mentioned it, and I think this is really, really key to mention. When you do a login system, you must have access to the code on the server side. And what I mean by that is, um, if you cannot make changes to Webflow, and if Webflow doesn't support um, login by default, which it does not, then you can actually make a fully secure login. So what happens in member stack, because it doesn't have access to Webflow, you know, it simply has its code on the kind of the, the front end side, the client side, the, the part that, that any user can control. Because of that, member stack cannot genuinely secure your content. All it can do is hide it and obfuscate it. And if you've not heard that word, it just means it can like make it very hard for somebody to actually get their hands on it if they're not logged in. But essentially, member stack, if a user turns off JavaScript on their computer, they will be able to access any content that you have on member stack. That's a really, really important point to bear in mind. If you've got something genuinely sensitive on here, then you cannot hide it on here. But one thing I would say is, if you just have content that you're, you know, you want to keep fairly, you know, private and hidden, this will deter everybody apart from, let's be honest, somebody who's really determined to find it. And so it's worth considering, you know, do you really need your content to be super secure? You know, let's say you're a I don't know, let's say you're a fitness coach and you've made a, a plan for somebody. Does that really need to be secure? Yes, you need to make sure that, that one person can see it and you don't want just anybody seeing it on a whim, but do you really need to make it 100% secure and, um, you know, hidden away? Not necessarily. Um, it's going to be different for everybody, but bear in mind, member stack, you know, this is a case for every single member stack um, a user and they've got tens of thousands of users because clearly a lot of people have thought about it and realized well it doesn't need to be um you know a hundred percent majorly majorly secure so where are we then so we've went ahead and uh, we've created that that kind of um that content oops that's the wrong uh, thing i've clicked there we've went ahead and created uh, that hidden content if we go on here and we refresh the page. Now, because we're logged out, then the link isn't showing up. Whereas if I go ahead and log in, then the link shows up. So similarly, if I now go back to my home page and I hit log out, and I then try to go manually to, oops, add dog, then it's just gonna kick me back to the home page. Watch that again. I'm going add dog, and it's kicking me back to the home page. So. Essentially, you can put that attribute on whatever you like, um, you know, that, that, sorry, that little attribute there. You can put it in a button, you can do whatever you want, and that is just going to hide whatever content you don't want someone to see unless they're logged in. And it's really just as simple as that. There, we've just built really easily a kind of fully fledged login, logout system. And as I say, you know, um, Member Stack has lots of stuff built in. You know, if I go ahead and create another button there, and I'm going to call this one Profile. I've just copied and pasted it again. Again, just play around with this little links bit because there's all sorts of really, really cool stuff you can do. Like I can go take this profile and then grab that. Uh, I've just hit that copy button again. I'll just put the link in here. I'll publish that yet again. Close the existing tab. Wait for it to publish. Open the new one. Log in and watch this. So if I go, oh, sorry, if I go back to my uh, homepage, then immediately I've got this profile button. When I pop it up, I can start messing with stuff. I can change my password. I can change my membership. If I had um, a paid membership, then I could log into it. Uh, sorry, I could activate it here, or I could change the billing details here. And so immediately, I mean, that took me all of, what, 10 seconds, um, and I've added a profile. Uh, you know, it's fully featured. It's the kind of thing where if you're building this from scratch, it'll probably take you a good few days to build that out in its entirety. That's the power of no code. All these things that are that are boilerplate, that are you know repeatable stuff, you know a, a password reset flow, a checkout. Every business has got to have it, and yet with no code you can add it in seconds, really nice and easy. And so there you have it. You know that is the the final component, the M of the WAM stack. There's tons of different stuff you can do. I, I highly encourage you to explore member stack in its entirety because there are tons of different uh, options. You know, you can kick people out if they're in for too long. You can do multi-step sign-ups. Um, you can integrate it with Zapier. So for example, you know, on nocode.tech, we've got a Zapier that runs whenever somebody signs up, which means our details are automatically published into um, Airtable. Nothing sensitive, obviously, but it lets us kind of keep a backup of our members and who they are. And it also lets us 
kind of look at the data that they give us. Um, so tons of different stuff you can do there. You can look through your sales. I mean, there's a whole, if you haven't added in, obviously we've not added in payments, you know, if you've done that, then there's a whole other uh, list of stuff you can do there. And then clearly, lastly, in this member section, you know, you can access stuff about whoever signed up. And just like in the Webflow CMS, you've got a unique ID here, which means you can, for example, you can tie users back to Webflow um, and uh, and try and, you know, almost you could keep like a, a unique you know, template page for each of them. You could keep details on them, whatever you want to do. So that in its entirety is the WAM stack. As you can see, you get the flexibility of Webflow, you get the power of Airtable, you get the infinite possibilities of Zapier, and you get this just really unique um, login system from member stack. It's a little bit of a learning curve. You've got to pass a lot of data between stuff. You've got to double save a lot of data. But the important bit is you get those fle that flexibility and that power of each tool. So highly recommend you give it a try. We've got a ton more tutorials on how to actually build stuff with the WAM stack. Um, if you need any tips with it, just reach out to me. I've been using it for years. It's absolutely my favorite way to build without code. And of course, the nocode.tech website is built just like that as well. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you shortly.